before we get going tonight, I'd, I'd like to go over and explain what we've done behind us here, because I'm sure you've heard this week that we are trying to make some, uh, we propose some changes in the welfare and Medicaid program. Not so much that we want to make any cuts. We need to explain to you how we went about this process. We have a, a budgeted amount of money that we were given to spend for the year. The year ends June 30th of next year. That will be the end of the fiscal year. Currently, and this is just not quite Christmas, we are spending the money that was earmarked to be spent in the fourth quarter, which is April, May, and June. At the current rate of Medicaid and welfare, we will be out of money by April 1st. So that is why we did not wait until the legislature comes back in January. We notified them that three to four weeks ago. We've done an analysis. We've given it to them and say, this is the problem. We've saved around 285,000 people on the system. Now they have to find a way to pay for the other 60,000, if that's the case. But this, I want to sort of give you an explanation by the graphs that we brought this year. This very first graph shows the total of this year, which ends June 30th of next, we have $120 million short. For the next year, what's that? Oh, All yeah, right, there it is. Uh, the next year, we have $101 million short. Now, if you recall, since 2000, actually since 1993, every year, we have a supplemental budget. And every year we have a problem in uh, Medicaid. This is not that we're overspending. What has happened is eligibility skyrocketed, utilization skyrocketed, and reimbursements have been dropping. So how we've paid for the bill over the last 20 years is every year we don't pay our hospitals, we reduce the amount of money we pay for, to doctors. Uh, in the last two years, we used stimulus money. And we do some cost shifting. What cost shifting means is when we don't pay the hospitals or we reduce the amount we pay the doctor, if it falls below their cost, they shift it over to the private sector for anybody that buys commercial health insurance. And that's one of the major reasons that we have some of the highest health insurance costs in the country. Now, already a year and a half before it gets here, or I should say, I'm sorry, I should say six months before the start of the next year, we already know we're going to be $101 million short. So that's another issue that the legislators will have to contend with. This line complicate matters, and this is the first time I've shown it, is really a sad state of affairs for the state of Maine. This top line is the number of taxpayers we have in the state. As you can see, it's fairly flat and it's actually going down. The reason it's going down, we're not losing population, but we're losing residents. What people do is they move to other states in the winter months and some stay six months in a day so they can claim another state as their primary residence and Maine as their secondary residence so they don't have to pay a lot of taxes. But this is the disturbing line. This line right here, which is growing and is, has now exceeded 
the number of people who pay taxes is the people on welfare. We now have, as of last year, 2010, more citizens in Maine on Medicaid, Maine care and welfare than we do paying into the system to pay for those services. I will say this, we are the most generous state in the union. We pay, we consider poverty 200% of the federal poverty line where 47 states do it at 100 to 133%. So, when you're losing people paying and more people get onto the system, what you end up with is this last graph which simply says, in 2002, we were spending $1.4 billion a year on main care, and today we are spending $2.5 billion a year. And the point is, and, the, and the, the biggest problem with that is that the 500,000 people that are still paying taxes in the state of Maine earn on average only 82% of the national average per capita income. So not only are we a generous state, we are a poor one. And so when you hear that the governor is a big bad guy who's going to cut, 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 what I'm trying to do is save as many people into the system with the money that I've been given to pay the bills with. In, G in January of this year, we paid off $258 million to the hospitals that we owed them. Out of the 400, we owed them 400 million. We paid off 258 million. It's back up to 400 million in one year. That's how bad the situation is getting out there. So the idea is, we have reformed health care. It's going to, the legislature did not implement it all at once. They implemented it in stages. I think they ought to consider putting it all in action as quickly as possible. As quickly as we can get it on board, we need to get it on board. Not stage it the way we've done. Because what that does, it's going to open up a lot of markets for people who are now on main care who could be able to afford cheaper commercial insurance. Now another thing that's very sad, and it's not on the graph yet, but in 2002, back over here in 2002, we had 120,000 people without any health insurance. In 2011, we have 120,000 people without health insurance. So you say, how can that be? It's our generosity. All those that were buying health insurance, put their kids on to main care, the adults go without, and as soon as the adults qualify, they drop their commercial insurance. The people without insurance, they still go to the emergency room. So the system not only needs money, the system needs to have some regulation changes so that we're fair to everyone the best that we can